I'd be interested to, to expand on, on the points you just made with specific reference to India. You talked about this resurgence in confidence um, across the whole emerging market. So are you seeing that particularly from your clients about India and is that going to be sustained? Yeah, there are a number of things happening and uh, uh, I must say there's a big battle taking place in the minds of investors around the world, not only for emerging markets but uh, uh, for developed markets as well, uh, active versus passive. Mm -hmm. Active managers have lost a lot of market share to ETFs mm -hmm. and other passive uh, instruments. And that is a real game changer. Mm -hmm. It's making uh, investing in funds a lot cheaper because the active managers now have to lower their fee structures mm -hmm. and they have to use a lot more uh, computerization to make sales more efficient. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be a global trend mm -hmm. uh, going forward. But there will be a time, and it's, I think it's beginning to take place, where active managers are going to be able to take advantage of the move to index. Because if the herd is moving in mm -hmm. one direction, <laughs> there'll be an opportunity to do something different. Right. And you're seeing that specifically about the Indian market? You're hearing this, this trend is going to be reflected here? Oh, definitely. That's okay. definitely going to happen okay. in India. Um, uh, there are a number of ETFs now in India. Of course, in the United States, there's certain uh, tax advantages to mm -hmm. ETFs, um, but I believe that the same trends will hit India. On this question of confidence, and you alluded to it in your presentation, perhaps we could now ask the question which we're going to put on the uh, pigeonhole system, um, which you can all vote for your own opinions. We can pull the, um, the pigeonhole um, question up on the screen, the code to log into that is uh, BBG20, uh, if you haven't already. And the question is whether or not an increase in US interest rates is going to drive significant outflows, specifically in India, in the equities and bond market. Do you have a view on that? I don't think it'll happen. And why, uh, why? The reason why? is, first of all, the Indian investor, the domestic investor, is becoming more important to the Indian market. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, when I arrived in India, the market went up <laughs> because I was the only game in town. <laughs> I was the only doesn't emerging market anymore, investor. <laughs> now, there are so many emerging market investors who are much bigger than we are, mm -hmm. have many more assets. But even so, the Indian investor now is becoming more important. They are becoming wealthier. They are becoming uh, 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 investor oriented. Mm -hmm. They are learning more about the market. So going forward, they will drive the market, not the foreign investors. Right. And the domestic investors are interested in their own market, not necessarily in other markets around the world. It's interesting. You can see now the audience is pretty evenly split, really. Oh, 50, really? 50 to 40 or so percent um, think that there are going to be outflows. Just moving on to the question of value and valuations. Again, you talked about this in your presentation. Um, when you look at India, obviously, it's historically generally been a little bit more expensive as a market. But even if you compare it to itself now, both the benchmark index is um, very much near a five-year high. The small cap index, which you've talked about a lot about um, investing in, that's at record highs in terms of valuations. And yet you still see some value in the stock market here? Yeah, because there's so much variety here. There's so much opportunity, particularly in the small and medium cap stocks. Um, yes, if you take an average, you see, the problem with averages is that a lot of these indices are market weight. Mm. In other words, are market capitalization weighted um, and or free float weighted. Mm -hmm. So you get a bias towards what's popular and what's big. But you can find many other companies that are really good bargains mm -hmm. and are growing at a fast rate. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, the growth, you must remember that two things are happening. Interest rates in India are going down, number one. Number two, the economy is growing at 7, 8%, whatever number you want to use. Putting that together, you can justify a higher uh, PE right. ratio, for example, or higher valuations. Okay. Talking about that interest rate cut, we had a very quick one from the new governor. Um, a shift of emphasis towards supporting growth. So there are two questions about that, really. First of all, do you think that was the right call? And secondly, do you think the government is doing enough on their side to support 
the boost in GDP that we're after in this country? I think the call by the central bank was, was right because inflation is coming down. So number one, I was really amazed at these, the uh, real interest rates here. You know, for somebody putting them on the bank, it's really attractive. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, mm -hmm. Very unusual. This is one of the reasons. Historically, why, here, you think uh, some Amer Americans are so unhappy about the interest rates they're getting in their banks, mm -hmm. and one of the appeals of Trump is that unhappiness that's expressed by retired people and people on fixed incomes. Mm -hmm. So uh, India is in a very sweet spot in that sense. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the government reforms, do you think? Government reforms are incredible. Uh, if you go, as, I don't think they're going to come on board. For example, the uh, sales tax mm. uh, nationwide will probably not be implemented fully, mm. uh, but in increments, yep. uh, fully maybe in a year, at the end of next year. But uh, the fact that they're moving in that direction is uh, tremendous. It's going to be very good. There's a question we're interested to ask all our speakers tonight, which is if you were in the driving seat, what would be the top reform? What's the top priority in terms of economic or policy reform from Delhi that you would like to see? What I would like to see is uh, all government workers having uh, a doubling of their salary. Interesting. And half of them fired. <laughs> That's got a round of applause, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there are no government. Well, all of the government employees here will stay.